Say you're working on a music video and you get this footage. Log looks totally fine. As soon as you convert it to Rec. 7 or 9, all of a sudden you got all this artifacting going on around the lights. Now the client wants a really punchy look, almost like what we're used to from a film negative where there is so much color density without any artifacting. So how can we achieve that here? Now, if somebody's thinking, well, maybe it was shot on a camera. Well, this was shot on Red Raven. So whether you're working on Alexa, a consumer camera, this is something you cannot escape. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take this and turn it into that. I'm going to be showing you five completely different techniques. So you pick your poison. And the last one is almost illegal. It should be illegal. It's that good. It is mind bendingly simple and the results are going to absolutely transform your workflow forever. And just a quick announcement, right now we're doing $200 off Kazi's Toolkit and Freelance Colorist Masterclass for President's Day sale. It will be ending soon and we have limited coupons. So it's first come, first serve. If you want to grade faster and get better results and take on more clients, Kazi's Toolkit is the answer. You can pause the screen and see what our users are saying. And if you're new to color grading, you came to the right place. Freelance Colorist Masterclass, 30 plus hours of content, exclusive Facebook community. Our students are working with brands like Nike, McDonald's, Gucci, Pepsi, Porsche, Google, Nikon, Pampers, and the list goes on. So whether you're interested in creating high-end looks with zero learning curve, or you wanna become a color grading ninja, these are the options right here. So take your pick, but act now before the sale ends. Let's get back to the video. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, let's get this party started. So we're inside Resolve. This was shot on Red Dragon, so it is converted to 709. And then I've just gone ahead and applied a simple look. That will have nothing to do with what we're trying to do. And then I just went ahead and balanced the shot a little bit. So, you know, we basically got this thing going on. That's the 709, and then this is what we have. So it just looks kind of nice. But that is not the point of this tutorial. So I'm going to take you through five different methods that you would go about cleaning up lights. So like, you know, you can see if I were to go right here and park it somewhere around here and zoom in, you see like this thing that's happening, like this artifacting that we get with these lights. And what is this? This is right here, what, what's happening here, like how our red is just absolutely cracking. And that's the problem that you will always have when you're working with RGB lighting or neon lights like these, right? And then if I were to come right here, you see like the information in the hair is just absolutely gone. And if I hover over, you can even see in my scopes what's happening. It's just absolutely choked, right? So the first way to control this would be by using your global saturation. So let's just attack that. That's the simplest way. Somebody who just started grading today, that's the first approach that they will use. So they'll just grab the global saturation, pull it down until nothing is cracking, nothing is breaking, and it's looking a lot better. So if I do before and after, we can see that we have damage controlled this area quite a bit. So that's pretty good, okay? The problem is, if I come right around here, even now, we still have that artifacting. It just basically changed the personality of the entire shot. Like it's not what we want. It just made the entire thing seem duller and thinner, right? Like there is just not that color density that we expect from like, say, a film negative. We're not getting that. And we're going to go ahead and save that version. So we already grabbed a still. Now I'm going to reset this. And now let's do... Our second method, which is sat versus sat inside your curves, your HSL curves. Sat versus sat is basically what it does is this is your least saturated area in the image. This is your highest saturated area in the image. So that's what the problem is, right? So we want to grab this point, the highest saturated area, and we want to pull it all the way down. And look how nicely it controlled all this breakage that was happening. So that's actually pretty good. Now, how does it compare to our first method, which was global saturation? So I'm just going to bring my global saturation on and do back and forth. I mean, it's much better than the global saturation, right? Because it's doing a much more controlled operation compared to a global operation as just with the saturation slider. 
Okay, so it's taking a lot of the sting out from the top end, but leaving most of it on the bottom end. But it still does affect the low end. I'm not going to lie. Like even these areas are getting affected quite a bit. So, yeah, you can, you know, grab this point and you can control it, but you can see like it's not really changing that much. You're seeing it right here. So for the simplicity's sake, I'm just going to leave it to that. I'm going to go ahead and grab that still. Good. Now we're going to reset that and I'm going to show you a third method to do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna click right here in Color Warper. I'm going to set it to 12 so we have more points to play with. Usually it will be set to uh, this, but I wanna turn this on and I wanna select three points. This just means that wherever I click, it's going to create like a border, uh, three points on each side. So then we don't affect the entire range of that hue, but only the adjacent areas to like whatever we have selected. So you'll see what I mean. This is the problem, right? Which is shown right here. This is the problem. So I'm going to click right here, select this point. I'm going to go under saturation. I'm going to start pulling it back and just look what I'm doing. So I can just leave it right here. Look at how much more controlled this is, even compared to, let's just say, our sat versus sat. You see like the sat versus sat was pretty good, but it was affecting a lot more areas than like this technique right here. And you can even see it, like how it's leaving everything else alone. It's only affecting this problematic area. And then especially when we compare it to, um, actually, let's just do an entire wipe. And if we compare it to our global saturation, huge difference, like how much more punchy this is. Now let's go to this right here, which is our second technique, uh, sat versus sat. And you can still see that Color Warper is more superior than the last two techniques. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to reset this. This time, we're going to use something that was introduced with Resolve 19. I'm talking about Color Slice. And here, what we wanna do is the problem area is red. So let's go ahead and grab the red saturation and start pulling it down and keep it somewhere around here. Now this, I like it very much, and I'll show you for a couple of reasons. So first of all, let's try to compare it with, now the difference is that if I compare it to my color warper, the color warper is a lot more punchy. We can see that right here, right? Because ultimately the idea is we want to keep the saturation in because when you watch a high-end commercial or a movie or something like that, that is graded perfectly like it will have so much meat, so much saturation without any artifacting. That's what we want to get to. So if I do before and after, this is just really, really pulling the, the essence of my image, but it does do a lot of stuff. So if I punch in right here and show you what's happening in this area, it is cleaning that up quite a bit. So I like that a lot. I like that very much. So like all that weird artifacting, is just almost gone. So that is good. But it comes at a cost of like watered down image. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that still. So this is actually a pretty good method, okay? Now I'm going to move to the cheat code. But before we do that, there's one more thing that you can do. You can just go in your IDT, actually you can go in your ODT and under gamut mapping method, you can turn on saturation compression and it will do something like this. Like watch how it controlled this. So if I do before, and then this is after. The problem with this is that we still have tons of artifacting and it is just pulling a lot of juice out of our image evenly. Almost sort of like in its own right, like a global saturation sort of effect where we just don't know where it's going to be pulling the saturation from. And I just don't feel comfortable using this particular tool. Like it actually just does not sit well with me at all. And also save this version as well, just for comparison's sake. Now I wanna show you the almost should be illegal tool. I'm gonna type in DCTL, I'm gonna drop this on and I'm going to select skin juice mixer, okay? In here, there is this parameter called saturation limiter, okay? And just look at the magic. Just watch before your eyes what it does. I'm gonna start pulling it back and I'm just focusing in the problematic area. I'm gonna keep pulling it and I'm going to put it 
somewhere around here and just look at what it did. If I do before and after, just watch how it kept everything else 100% exactly the same. The juice is exactly there and it just removed all the problems. Like it just removed all of this. Like all of our issues are gone. Just look at this. It cleaned it up everywhere. Look at this. Just cleaned it right up. Even if I look at how her hair right here was just like breaking apart, it's coming through now. It just, just like that. Just that's how much we had to do. And that's it. It just fixed it. So now if I compare this to any of these methods, so this is our... Uh, color gamut process that we did on the ODT. And you can see the artifacting. It's so bad. Even if I just punch it a little bit closer so we can see how bad this is. Then let's go to our um, color slice method. And like, look at how it just makes, it just desaturates the entire image and makes it like so thin. And yet it still has like all that gunk. That's not cleaned up. Like I can just like leave it somewhere around here and show you, like, look at this compared to our method. This superior should be an illegal tool right here. And now let's just compare it to Color Warper. Color Warper is really nice in terms of saturation, how it's keeping that saturation. But like, look at what's happening with my tubes. If I punch in closer and then look at it with Skin Juice Mixer, look at this and how easy it was to clean that up. No qualifier necessary. Anytime you're gonna be using tools like this and you're going to be like going in and grabbing a point, it is going to absolutely destroy you in the long run when you go from shot to shot compared to this method. Just look at how clean this is. It blows my freaking mind. Okay, what about if we go and look at our sat versus sat? Again, the gunk is there. What about our global sat? It's closer to color slice, like it just, it just pulls all of that juice out. So I know I told you I'm going to show you one tool that should be illegal. And uh, that's this. But now I want to save this and show you one more tool that not only cleans up the entire image, gives you even more flexibility to actually add more saturation while removing all this artifacting. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, which I already have. I'm going to delete this, and this time I'm going to drop in this DCTL, and I'm going to choose saturation control. And I'm just going to turn this guy on so it can tell us like what's really going on. So what I want to do here is I want to just go under my mid sat and watch this. I'm actually cranking more saturation into my image. And as I do that, I clean up my image. Just look at this. As I add, like, look at how much color we added. Like, look at this. Look at this, how much color we added. And as I'm going to reset it so you can see it again. As I add more color, we actually clean up our image. Like, look at this. We're cleaning up our image. And this is before and then this is after. Like, look at how much more magenta we added. Now, we can clean this up by using our mid and a high sat control point. So if I go right here and open this up, because let's just say if the magenta is becoming overwhelming, I can just even that out like this. And now if I do before and after, like look at, we added more saturation and we cleaned up our image. So let's just say I wanna clean this up even more. I can go in my high sat and start controlling it. So I can just bring it and keep it somewhere around here. And if I pull out and if I do before and after, this is a very, very interesting method. Yes, it requires a little bit more uh, finessing, but it wasn't that much. And look at, we added more saturation in a scene lit with neon lights, yet we cleaned up all the artifacts. Like, look at this. So now if I compare this to our previous skin juice tool, you know, you pick your favorite. I don't know. I actually like this a lot more only because it just lets me do more. Like it, it gives me more control. It puts me in the driver's seat. I get to decide where I want to keep everything.
And then even like if we go from shot to shot and make some adjustments, I can just have finer controls. But let's not take away from how clean and natural our results were with the skin juice and how easy it was. Just one slider, push it back and get rid of all the artifacting and lock it right there. It was just so simple. So now tell me how insane these two tools are because what we can do is now I can just go ahead and grab all of these, go under split screen and select images. And now it will literally let us compare basically every single version. I wanna get rid of the color gamut. So we can just like get rid of the color gamut one. Is this the color gamut one? Yeah, so we can just get rid of that. And then once we get rid of this now, at least we can see it like that and just have more real estate. And all right, so what we got going on here is this is gonna be our current version. So this is basically sat control. This is our global saturation. This is our sat versus sat color warper, color slice skin juice mixer. And if you just like pause and like look and see which one you prefer, I'm just going to go ahead and say this to me looks the closest to a film negative, like what we are used to seeing, like where there's so much color, nothing is breaking, everything is in place holding. And then obviously this would be my second choice because it just removes the artifacts and leaves everything else intact. Whereas like every other version has tons of gunk and the personality is just completely stripped away. And do not forget to take advantage of the President's Day sale. Links are in the description. All right, so there you have it. I mean, this is the name of the game when it comes to color grading. There are a bunch of different ways to skin a cat. And if you enjoyed this video, then please do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have any specific content suggestion, drop it down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, fans.